Did you make this huge mistake and ruin your credit score? Millions of Americans across the United States are just simply confused on how to use their credit properly. So they make very serious errors and they ruin and destroy their credit scores. So on today's video, I'm going to cover the biggest mistake that you're making with your credit and how you can fix it all in the same video. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike, the credit guy. I'm the owner and founder of Limitless Culture. We created the most advanced DIY credit management system in the industry. Our system allows you to take control of your credit, creating custom Metro 2 attack letters every single round, never using templates for only $55.99 a month. Link is always going to be in the description. Now let's get into this video. Misinformation is everywhere, and this is why it's super confusing to every single American out there on how to use their credit properly. I mean, you look all over the internet and you can see that big, huge companies and big, huge bloggers are telling people, use up to 30% of your credit. Make sure, get more credit, get more credit. The more credit you have, the better the credit score. This is the biggest mistake that people make. When you're starting to rebuild your credit, you go and you start adding all these crappy credit cards. Let's be honest with each other. Everybody has done it. Whether you knew that they were crappy or you just thought this was the only option you had. You start adding lines of credit. And what I tell people is you need to let your credit grow and age. Think about it like this. Your credit is like a plant. You get your potting soil, you got your pot, you put the seed in there, and then you have to water it, maintain it, make sure it gets sun. You need to let it grow. But if you don't let it grow, what happens? You've overwatered it, and now it's saturated, and it's gonna die. It's the same thing with credit. I know it's crazy I came up with this whole analogy, but it's literally almost exactly the same. So what I'm gonna tell you is really serious. Stop applying for so much credit. You're literally destroying your average age of credit. It is one of the biggest determining factors that gets you into the 800 club. And people think that adding a bunch of new credit is going to increase your credit score. In fact, when you open a new account, it can potentially drop your credit score, but some people need it because they just don't have enough credit. You have a $200 credit card and a $500 credit card or a $100 credit card. I've seen those, I know that's shocking, right? But the problem there is, is you just didn't set up your credit properly. You just went out there willy nilly and got anything. People are gonna ask me in the comments, well, what do I do with those crappy credit cards, Mike? You're going to have to make an adult decision and decide that on your own, because I can't tell you what to do with your credit. But understand, when you close a credit card, it's going to have a negative impact because you're closing that account and you're removing that available credit from your credit profile. So it will negatively affect you, meaning it's going to tank your credit score if you close a crappy credit card. So you have to make the decision. Do I keep this for the longevity, keep paying the annual fees for this crappy credit card, or do I just write it out and say whatever and close it? So it's gonna be up to you what you do with those bad credit cards, but understand, the longer you wait to rip the Band-Aid off, the more it's going to hurt you. The historical information that we have seen looking at thousands of credit reports has told us that your first milestone with your age of credit needs to be three years. That's when you have made a serious accomplishment. Now, the next milestone is going to be five years. Looking at that age of credit, what was the mix of credit that got them to the 800 club? On average, we saw people that only had three credit cards. That's right, three credit cards. At maximum, they had five credit cards. And then they had a mortgage and an auto loan, and then they had maybe one or two closed auto loans in the background. And that was it. There was no personal loans, there were no lines of credit, no checking lines of credit, none of this nonsense. None of it was needed. It was a very basic setup. And that's what truly gets people into the 800 club that mix of credit along with age paired together. Over time, your score will get there. And then imagine once you get to 10 years of average age of credit, then you're sitting at the top of the pinnacle at an 850. So before anyone comes to me in the comments saying, but you have so many credit cards, Mike, 
I have credit cards because I have to test them out to see how they operate so I can bring our community real true data points. We're not sitting out here like all these other amateurs that are just regurgitating information. We need true effective data points that can truly help our community. Understanding how to use your credit cards is a very vital part to your success with your credit score. Now, it doesn't matter if you use 100% of your available credit or 30% or 10%, none of that matters. How much of your credit card that you use does not matter. Remember that. What matters is the balances that report to the credit bureaus. So you can use all the way up to $500 of your $500 credit limit. You can use all the way up to a 10,000 of your $10,000 credit limit, but you need to control what reports. Reporting a very low balance is the key to your success with your credit score. It is the biggest mistake that people make. They put a balance on a credit card, they don't pay it off in full, and then their credit score tanks and they're like, oh my God, what's going on? What did Experian, Equifax and do to me? No, it was you. You reported a larger balance. Remember, the larger the balances that you report, the more your score is going to drop. Little quick tip here, always keep your credit cards active, even for the ones that you don't like. If you don't keep them active, they will shut them down. So just run a small transaction through them once every two months, or at least once every three months, because if you don't, they will shut down that credit card. Just a little key tip there. Now I'm gonna put up a statement up on the screen so everyone can see it together. Now, I want you to pull up your statement and look at the dates. Everyone knows you have to make a payment by the due date. It's pretty clear, right? Either the full payment to pay off the credit card in full or just the minimum payment. Set your auto payment up to always make a payment no matter what. A little small tip I wanna throw in here, never ever just leave your credit cards inactive. You need to at least run one transaction through them once every two to three months at maximum because if you don't they'll shut the card off because you're not using it i almost forgot to tell you that because it's very important this happens to a lot of people imagine if you have a credit card that has 15 years of age but guess what it's not the best credit card so you don't use it anymore and then they turn it off once they turn it off they close an account it's going to tank your credit score so make sure that you do that now let's put up on the screen right here a statement i want you to pull up your statement and look at the two most important dates the first one is your due date, and the second one is your closing date. So your due date, you have to make a minimum payment or you can pay off the card in full if you like. Make sure that you set up your auto payment. Don't think that you're gonna be awesome and pay your credit card on time every single month. You can forget. And make sure that you set the auto payment to your checking account, not your debit card. Because if you set it to your checking account, it will never miss a payment. If you set it to your debit card and then guess what? You lose your card, it gets stolen, whatever, and you have to replace it, you can potentially miss a payment. Now look at that second date that's in the square box. It says December 23rd to January 22nd. The second date right there, January 22nd, is the statement closing date. That is very important to understand and live and die by that statement closing date. So if it closes on the 22nd, I wanna make sure that I make my payment in full before the 20th or at least on the 20th so that way I have at least two days for the statement to clear and it to actually clear that balance. So I, I pay off my credit card in full by the 20th. Then the payment clears on the 22nd and now there's no balance. Now I'm gonna pump my brakes, I'm gonna stop and I'm not going to use my credit card any longer for a maximum of seven days. Right after the statement closing date is the report date. The credit card company has five to seven days to report your balance to the credit bureaus. So you want to make sure that you do not put any new balance on the credit cards. It's just that simple for seven days from the 22nd, as an example, you know, because 22nd is the closing date. So when you look at that date, so now you're gonna say, okay, well, wow, I don't use the credit card until the 30th. Yeah, that's right. The biggest mistake that people make is they'll pay their credit card off right before the statement closing date, and then they'll start using the credit card the next day because they don't think, well, oh, when's the report date? So in case you're wondering, well, how do I find the report date? 
If you want, you can go on your credit reports and look for the date that it reports, or you can call, call the credit card company. But I say just create yourself a seven day window so you're not chasing down this actual date. So remember, keeping your utilization really low is going to be key. I always tell people keep it below 9%. But the crazy thing is this chart that I'm gonna put up right here on the screen clearly shows you, you start to negatively impact your credit score when you hit 7%. So it's a few points here and there once you're at, at 9% utilization. But if you keep your utilization, as we see in this chart, at 0% utilization, you can get a maximum of 55 points. If you report between one to 6% utilization, you're gonna get a maximum of 65 points. Now see the little asterisk? That is minus the actual points you already received. I may get a full 10 points, you may get three, your friend only gets one, and somebody gets none. No points increase when you carry one to 6% utilization. So we're busting up the myth that you have to carry a bounce. You don't, you simply don't, because everyone's credit profile is gonna be different, and not everyone may get the full 10 points. Paying down your credit cards below 7% is going to cause your credit score to shoot to the moon. If you pay off your credit cards and your credit score drops, you're not looking at a FICO score. Your FICO score is the only thing that matters. Vantage credit scores do not react the same. Focus on your age of credit. That's gonna help your credit score continue to grow and then control your credit score. Pay down all of your credit cards and your score is going to shoot to the moon in less than 30 days. The moment that new balance reports a zero to 7% utilization, your score is gonna to shoot to the moon. Even zero to 9%, you're still going to gain points very quickly. So I hope you enjoyed this video. We covered the number two ways to increase your credit score and how to destroy them. So you know exactly what you're doing wrong and how to fix it. If there's anything specific you want me to talk about, drop it in the comment section. If there's any other topics you want me to talk about, drop them in the comment section. Don't be afraid to speak up because it's all about you, our community. We cannot do it without you. I cannot thank you enough. Now make sure that you watch the next two videos because they are recommended by YouTube. And don't forget, subscribe to increase your credit score.